floating ice at the top of the world has seldom known the foot of man. Only once, in 1909, has the North Pole been reached on foot. In the air, man first flew over the North Pole in 1926. Today, commercial airlines use the polar route to shorten the distance between continents. By surface ship, man's attempts to crash through to the North Pole have so far been in vain. The North Pole is in the midst of an ocean of ice, ever-changing, freezing or melting, opening or closing, under the influence of sudden temperature changes, ocean currents and shifting winds. For several decades, Arctic pioneers envisioned the possibility of navigation under the polar ice, but conventional submarines could not stay submerged long enough to make the polar crossing. They could not take chances in finding stretches of ice-free water. The icy masses at the top of the world would not yield to the ships of men. But then, in January 1954, the world's first atomic submarine was launched in the United States. As thousands looked on and cheered, Mrs. Dwight Eisenhower christened the new ship the Nautilus after the legendary vessel of Jules Verne. This ship was one of the early wonders of the atomic age. The Nautilus represented a revolutionary experiment. The Navy men selected to take her out to sea were technicians of the highest order, as well as accomplished seamen. With a crew of 116 men, the Nautilus set fantastic records. She traveled 68,000 miles, or more than twice around the world, without having to refuel, that is, without having to replace her charge of uranium. Rear Admiral Hyman Rickover pioneered the nuclear submarine. The Nautilus was the first of many atomic underwater craft built in the United States over the past few years. Floating atomic plants whose propulsion system is still something of a mystery to the average man. Admiral Rickover has often explained to the public how the Nautilus is powered. The ship's atomic reactor creates the heat that generates the steam used to drive the ship's turbines and propellers. To protect her crew from dangerous radioactivity, there is a heavy shield around the ship's nuclear reactor. Here, the force of the atom is safely harnessed to drive a powerful ship. The Nautilus was the most amazing vessel of rope. She set navigational records that astounded the experts. Her most spectacular feat was to come in August 1958. On August 8th, at the White House in Washington, President Eisenhower decorated Commander William R. Anderson, the 37-year-old skipper of the Nautilus. It was only then that the world learned that Commander Anderson had sailed the Nautilus across the North Pole under the Arctic ice cap. The President walked over to congratulate Commander Anderson's wife, who had also just heard of her husband's great adventure. A great adventure, which on Sunday, August 3rd, at exactly 11.15 p.m., took Commander Anderson and his crew across the top of the world during a four-day dive under the polar ice cap. The representatives of the press eagerly questioned Commander Anderson on the exploit of the Nautilus. The uh, crossing itself took four days. The distance covered from the ice factor crossing the ice Yes, sir. Distance involved from the Sea Valley of Point Barra to open water in the Greenland Sea was 1,830 miles. A trip across the North, North Pole where there's no opportunity to observe anything outside of the ship. No opportunity to observe stars or to do any type of electronic navigation presents a very formidable problem, or what has been up to now a very formidable problem. Sailing from the Hawaiian Islands, the Nautilus entered the Arctic through the Bering Strait. 
between North America and Asia. Off the Alaskan coast, she sighted the polar ice cap. Here, the epic journey began. Here, under the ice shelf, on the top of the world, the Nautilus submerged on August 1st. All equipment functioned perfectly, including a revolutionary inertial guidance system, which automatically held the sub on course and depth. The crew was briefed on the ship's mission to pioneer a new, shorter route between the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans, between the continents of Asia, North America, and Europe, to shorten, for example, the distance between Tokyo and London from 11,200 miles to 6,300 miles, cutting it almost in half. Life aboard ship followed a disciplined schedule. The Nautilus carried 75 days of food for the voyage. The crew's living quarters had been designed to be functional and comfortable, an important factor during long periods of submersion, which in the case of atomic submarines can possibly stretch into months. There were periodic radiation checks, but the feeling of being aboard an unusual vessel on an unusual journey did not interfere with day-to-day -day activities and relaxation. These are the actual sounds recorded aboard the Nautilus as she neared the North Pole a constant humming of instruments, while we see crewmen checking oxygen equipment and blowers which provide fresh air. television in the shape of flying clouds. And now, the captain's announcement that the North Pole has been reached. And the U.S. Navy, Sunday, 3 August, 1958, 2350, Eastern Daylight Saving Time, the North Pole. After four days, after 1,830 miles under the ice pack, on August 5th, the Nautilus surfaced in the Greenland Sea, a voyage of discovery that may lead the way to new commercial routes to link the continents and the peoples of the world.